Welcome to Pimpy's Investment Chat, where we keep investment talk simple. And here's your host, Pimpy. What is going on out there, peeps? You know this man here is smiling big. You know, I had a feeling. I did. I knew there was something up the sleeve of the coordinating framework. I said, you can't trust Maliki. One way or another, he's going to make all kinds of promises and break those promises. I guarantee you he's going to do that. He's also going to find a way to get into power. This is his last crack at trying to be the next Saddam Hussein and run all of Iraq. This is it for him. And he's going to have the support of Iran and the United States. We're going to get into that. Before I get started, though, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. If you're not a subscriber, please do so, because when you do, it helps out the channel, and I certainly do appreciate it. If you're thinking about buying gold and silver, go check out our friends over there at Money Metals Exchange. The link is down below in the description. If you're a first-time buyer and you spend more than $100, use promo code PIMPY, P-I-M-P-Y, and you will get a free half ounce of silver. Oh, man, I hate to be that guy that said I told you so. I knew this. Sauter resigning and having his reps resign as well was a bad move. And he went toe-to-toe -to -toe for a little while, but I knew once he tried to make an agreement with the coordinated framework and they got into power and they controlled the government, it was going to be all bad from there. Well, was I right? Let's find out. Here we go. By the names, says a member of the Democratic Party, two vice presidents of the Republic, and one for the Sudanese. It says a member of the Kurdistan Democratic Party revealed the intentions of the President of the Republic, Rashid, to activate the decree of his two deputies. You want to guess who one of them is? It was said to the news that the President of the Republic, Rashid, will sign a decree appointing two deputies, and they are likely to be the head of the State of Law Coalition, Maliki, and the head of the Sovereignty Alliance, Kanjar. He added, it is also possible that there will be a deputy prime minister for security affairs, and the candidate may be the head of the Fatah Alliance, Amari. They continued with, there will be new positions and a ministry that the Turkmen component will demand, and there may be a rotation and change of ministerial positions in the formation of the prime minister designate al Sundis. So this isn't good. This was one of my fears that once the coordinated framework got into power, they were not going to keep any of their promises. Seriously, they wouldn't. I was concerned about that. So what were the promises? Well, they would have members of the Sauter's group be part of the cabinet. Also, they promised to go to early elections. So keep that in mind. Maliki wasn't supposed to hold a real position of power. He would be down there with the rest of the House representatives. Now they're talking about he might be the vice president, and there might be an assignment of deputy prime minister. So let's take a look at exactly what it is that the deputy prime minister does. A deputy prime minister traditionally serves as the acting prime minister when the prime minister is temporarily absent or incapable of exercising power. The deputy prime minister is often asked to succeed the prime minister's office following the prime minister's sudden death or unexpected resignation. So if for whatever reason, Sandy just decides that, hey, um, I'm going to resign for health reasons or whatever, or he magically wakes up dead one day, then the deputy prime minister would be the next in line. And keep in mind that the prime minister position is the one that actually runs the country, not the president. Although they're saying that Maliki might be the vice president, which again, he can still control things from that position. But most likely, as it said in the paragraph, right here it says, and there may be a rotation and change in ministerial positions in the formation of the government. So there you go. Already, Maliki has found that back door that I was talking about. I said, don't be surprised if he finds a back door to get into where he wants to be. He wants to be the prime minister. So he told everybody when there was an uprising, oh, fine, I don't want to be the prime minister. I was like, don't believe that. Once the coordinating framework gets into power, that, don't believe that. He's going to find a way to become prime minister. If not, then he'll be vice president or, and then work his way into being the president and still run things from where he's at. He's going to find a way to be the man that controls the country. 
I also expressed some concern about once they got into power, I was concerned about what might happen to al Qadimi and also what might happen to Sadr. Let's move forward. It said, al Sindi presented his booth to the parliament on Thursday and the Kurds decide their ministries. Okay. Two members of the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan and the Kurdistan Democratic Party revealed the Prime Minister al Sindi will present his government cabinet to the House of Representatives. A member of the Democratic Party told the news... It is too easy to talk about the quotas of the ministries. And next Thursday, al Sindi will present his booth. And a number of sovereign ministries remain unresolved. And the session is in order to pass the government. But let's scoot down to this one paragraph. Because it's exactly what I was concerned about. He revealed the desire of some ministers in al Qadimi's government to remain in their position. But we exclude that, noting that there are very serious corruption files related to the October demonstration and military and security files. They're going to go after al Qadimi. I told you that once the coordinated framework got into power, they were going to get rid of all evidence of their corruption that they were concerned about and that al Qadimi was going to use to go after him. And Sauter wanted to go through the corruption files. They're going to get rid of all that evidence and now they're going to go after their political enemies, which will be Sauter and al Qadimi. Before we get more into what I was just talking about, this is interesting. In three files, America agrees with European countries to cooperate with Iraq. Of course they do. America loves corrupt politicians because you can control them. Said the Sudanese government, 22 ministries, 12 are which are from the coordinated framework. And this is the share of the Kurds and Sunnis. What happened to the agreement to make at least, what was it, four or six of these chairs available to Sadr's people? Well, let's find out. <laughs> the leader of the coordinated framework revealed today, Monday, the details of the cabinet formation of the prime minister designate al Sundi intends to form. The ministerial cabinet of the Sudanese government will consist of 22 and 24 ministries, distributing four ministries of the sovereign alliance headed by Halabasi and Kanjar, and the two ministries of the Azam alliance, and four ministries of which the Kurdistan Democratic Party and one to the National Union. Twelve ministries will go to the coordinating framework and they will be four to the state of law and six to the Al-Fatat. Wait, what happened to the Sadr's people? Remember, that was part of the agreement. What happened to that? Hmm, interesting. So, what of Sadr now? You see, here's where Sadr messed up. By resigning and taking his representatives with him, 75 of them, he basically turned over everything to the coordinated framework. Then they promised all kinds of things to everybody. But here's the problem. Once the coordinated framework gets into the office and they become the government, then they're allowed the full force of the government to do whatever they want. If you try to protest and rise up against Maliki and the government, if you don't agree with it, it becomes an attempted coup is what they're going to call it, an insurrection. Say whatever it is you want, and they can use the full force of the government to go after these people is what they can do. Not to mention, they'll have the international community on their side. So in the beginning, the international community really can do nothing. They're waiting to see who's going to get the power. Now that they know Maliki and the coordinated framework have it, that means they're going to support anything that they do, and Sauter can't do anything about it. And they're going to use the same power of this government to go after al Qadimi, Because al Qadimi had the balls to want to open up the corruption files and go after Maliki and his people. After the Sadr challenge, America questions determine what is expected of the Sundanese government. Well, let's take a look. Let's see how right I was. Said American Queens Institute raised a set of questions and observations about the developments of the new political scene in Iraq after the Sauter's Challenge page was closed. The American Institute, in a report published in English and translated over there in Iraq, indicated an attempt to turn the outgoing Prime Minister al Qadimi into a scapegoat for rampant corruption at a time when it is necessary to wait to see how the Prime Minister designate Sandi will act regarding a series of files, among them are reform, how to deal with the solder space, the U.S. military presence, the budget of the popular mobilization, and the existing threat from ISIS. 
if you remember, I was letting people know that the generals were reporting how upset they were at Maliki. They didn't want him to be in power. Why? Because they, he gave them stand-down order and let ISIS come into Baghdad, the capital, as well as other parts of the country. And they created a caliphate. So not good. I mean, you know, Maliki wants to help turn uh, Iraq into an Islamic state, just like Iran has. And I really felt like the reason why they let ISIS come in is, was to help convert the country into an Islamic state. It, it obviously didn't make it that far, but now with the Maliki back in control, and again, this guy wants to be the next Saddam Hussein. I did a, a video showing you guys what it is he attempted the last time he was in power. So, and this most likely would be his last chance to try to do that, and I think he's going to go for it. So they're going to make al Kadimi the scapegoat. Said so after the American report indicated that the Sadrist leader, who was defeated by maneuver and weapons, no longer had a rational path to power. He made it clear that after a quick sequence of events on October 13th, Rashid was elected to the presidency, who was signed Sunday to form the government, which may mean that the crisis that affected Iraq since last year has ended. Well, Sadr did say he'd give him six months, and we'll see what happens. Again, this is different. It isn't like before. It's one party against another. Now the coordinated framework has the full power of the government. The report added that the page, the Sauter challenge, has been categorically closed, stressing that there will be no new elections before another three years unless there are surprises. Wait, what? Didn't they agree that if the coordinated framework got to go in there and do what they needed to do, that they promised to have early elections in about a year and a half? Hmm. Didn't Pimpy say that these guys would break their promise and do whatever it took to stay in power? Yes. Look at already they're breaking their promises. He also pointed out that the issue of Sauter continuing influence through senior bureaucrats whom he placed in a number of ministries depends on whether al Sandia embarks on a purge of his appointees. You know he's going to. Malik, he's going to make him. Similar to Sauter's commitment to his appointments. After noting that Sauter's response to what happened politically by choosing Rashid and al Sandi was violent as he prevented his supporters from dealing with a new government, the report said that the new leadership, in its quest to maintain the legitimacy of its broad support base, may look for some way from in order to tempt Sauter to return to the game. So the way forward seems ambiguous, adding, for example, that the new team moved in order to prevent al Qadimi from leaving Iraq in an attempt to make him the scapegoat for the rampant corruption that had prompted many Iraqis to vote for Sadr. It was al Qadimi that was winging out all of the corruption, so I don't know what they're talking about. While the report questioned what these developments mean for the U.S.-Iraqi relations, it said that, for Washington, al Sandi is the most logical candidate amongst the names proposed by the coordinated framework, noting that he is an expert technocrat who previously served as a Minister of Human Rights and a Minister of Labor and Affairs and Social, and that his blood is less bad than some of the other candidates. <laughs> That's the problem. His blood's less bad. They like corrupt people. While the report stated that al Sandi was considered a product of former Prime Minister Maliki, he separated from the Dawa party and the extent of Maliki's controversial influence on him is not yet clear. No, he's influenced him or Maliki never would have supported him. After the report indicated that al Sandi is viewed as a weak leader, he said that the United States would pursue one of the issues represented in the funds allocated to the regular army and the anti-terrorist apparatus in a budget compared to the funds that would be allocated to the popular mobilization. He added that al Sandi must also determine how to deal with al Sadr and his base loyal to him. And if he is completely excluded from the government, he may choose to create chaos, adding that after Baghdad prepared for the possibility of a large-scale demonstration after the election of Rashid as the president a few days ago, nothing has happened. It happens, but he pointed out that it would not be wise to take this calm for granted as long as Sadr is the one who moves this to the pot. The report concluded by saying the most worrying is the potential impact of Maliki on the new prime minister, recalling that Washington holds Maliki responsible for creating the conditions that allowed for the incubation of ISIS in Iraq, pointed out that what is worrisome is the possibility of the 
recurrence of such a method of discriminatory rule. This is exactly what they want. I told you this New World Order had a plan in which Iran would run all the Middle East. If these people do anything like we're seeing in Europe and in the United States, that means they're going to destroy the country from within, unfortunately. So what does this mean for the exchange rate? So you saw what I said up there. Maliki is most likely going to be nominated as the vice president, uh, appointed to the vice president. But most likely, that's not the position. That will be his final stop. They're going to find a way to maneuver him into the prime minister's position. He's going to take a crack at this one more time. And it's unfortunate for the Iraqi people that he wants to be the next Saddam Hussein. Well, I told you I had a feeling that if Maliki and his people got into power, you would see an increase in the value of the Iraqi dinar. Most likely, the first step is to in increase it back to where it was at 1190 I do remember Maliki talking about him getting the exchange rate up to $1.12 at one time. I did videos about that. But if he does get it that high, it would be short-lived for a couple reasons. One, there will be enough time for Maliki to take all the cash that he allegedly stole, make its exchange into U.S. dollars, and then turn around and use a crash in the economy because the exchange rate to drop it back down, which is exactly where the United States and the World Economic Forum want that, a devalued currency. That's right. So you can get work done there through cheap labor and cheap products. Globalization of Iraq looks like it's well on its way. Maliki is going to get well paid. The only question is, are we going to be able to take advantage of that? So if they do change the exchange rate, are we going to be allowed to sell our dinars? I hope so. We'll find out. You guys let me know what you think. I'll look forward to your comments. And I'll catch you later. I'm out.